Hello traders, this is Forensic Forex with Deontay where we analyze the details and specifics of the foreign exchange market. This video is going to focus on the Forex speculators and participants within the Forex market. Now I know many people may be quick to say, I just want to learn about price action. Show me the charts, show me the entry techniques, show me the exit techniques, show me IPTA, show me swing trades, show me how to trade on a daily time frame. There are going to be many questions to come. However, we must understand the realm of the Forex market. Many traders are not taught the framework that makes up the Forex market. Most traders start trading without understanding the asset class they are pouring live funds into, which can be dangerous and could lead into the cycle of losing money and being depressed. This channel will bring light to traders who have been misinformed or underinformed about the Forex market. Before we get into today's lesson, let's get into our disclaimer. Do your own research. My content is intended to be used for informational purposes only. Please do your research before making any investment or trade based on the information provided and consider your circumstances. You can talk to a professional or do your independent research on verifying any information that you find on my channel. This is a message from myself, Deontay, as I am not a professional. With that being said, let's jump right into the lesson. The Forex market consists of three speculators. One out of the three speculators controls the market and the price action we see. Price is 100%, and I'm telling you, 100% manipulated by this spectator. Price does not randomly move up or down. Price is moving strategically and methodically because of this one group. Now, we're going to get into these three groups and define them briefly. Now, here are the three speculators within the Forex market. Small speculators, large speculators, and commercial speculators. Each one of these speculators plays a role within the Forex market. I will define these three groups as simple as possible. We will start off with the small speculators. The small speculators, also known as the retail traders, have the smallest liquidity when it comes to the Forex market. Retail traders also have the lowest IQ when it comes to price action and how it's delivered to the marketplace. They do not move price, but can only participate in the shadow of the other two spectators. As you can see on the left side, there's a picture of a typical retail trader's chart. When you look at a retail trader's chart, most likely they're going to look like this. Not exactly, but it's definitely going to be very colorful. There's going to be a lot of flashy things, a lot of numbers everywhere, a lot of lines everywhere, a lot of boxes, a lot of zones. And I personally do not agree for a new trader to be dabbling into indicators. Indicators, and you'll hear me say this time and time again, indicators are detrimental to a trader's development, especially a new trader's development. You don't need to depend on these flashy gizmos or tools to tell you when to buy or sell. Price action will always tell you what's going on and how to paint a storyline to be profitable. You don't need to depend on programming or lagging indicators to tell you when to buy or to sell. The next group that we have are the large speculators, also known as the largely funded banks who have the second largest liquidity when it comes to the market. These banks have to report their positions to the CFTC. They do not move price regardless of the large liquidity they have. However, they do have a greater sense of what price is doing compared to the retail traders. On the left, I've added a list of some large commercial banks that you may have heard of before. JP Morgan, UBS, XCX Markets, Deutsche Bank, Citibank, HSBC, Jumping Trade, Goldman Sachs, Sater Street, Bank of America. These are a few large speculators within the Forex market. These banks as well participate within the foreign exchange market. The last and final group is the commercial speculators, also known as the central banks. They have the largest liquidity when it comes to the market they are the liquidity providers of the marketplace. They too have to report their positions to the CFTC. They control the price action in the Forex market. They manipulate the marketplace. Now you can see on the left, I have this chart, which has a bunch of central banks and their corresponding country. So as you can see at the top, United States, you got the Federal Reserve. Um, if you go below that, you got the BOE, which is the Bank of England. You got the BOC, which is the Bank of Canada. You got the PBC, which I think is the People's Bank of China. Um, below that, you got the ECB, European Central Bank. And you have 
a plethora of other central banks amongst the countries. So these are the big dogs and the big contenders within the Forex place. They're the ones that actually provide the liquidity that we're able to trade in the market. Without them, there is no market. So it's their playing ground. Now you may be asking yourself, why is it so important to know these speculators? Well, I'll tell you. It's important to know these speculators because you're going to be informed on the real code of the Forex market, what actually makes up the market. Would you rather learn the new job position by a new retail sales employee or the actual CEO who founded the company? Which brings me to the main concept of this video. The market efficiency paradigm. Now, when you think about this in simple terms, there are going to be a small group that has most of the power or control of the market. And then there's going to be a large group that thinks they have control of the market. Those are the people that are most likely uninformed and misinformed. Those are going to be our retail speculators. However, there's a small group or a small entity, which we know are the central banks, who are also known as the commercial speculators. They are informed, they are the liquidity provider, and they move price. The way they move price is the way we, as a small trader, or quote-unquote in raw definition, I am a retail trader because my liquidity isn't as large as the large banks and isn't definitely large as the central banks. So I'm just someone that trades and speculates with small liquidity. That does not mean I have to be misinformed or underinformed. However, I need to change my thought process and think like a commercial speculator. With that being said, one group of the Forex market is the lion of the hierarchy and the other group is the sheep of the hierarchy. We will dive a bit deeper into the thought process and the fate of both groups. Let's start off with the retail speculators. When I think or define retail speculators, these are the first thoughts that come to mind. As you can see inside the bubble, you have uninformed, misinformed, small liquidity, believes they move price. Now this is a bit of the logic that most retail traders or new traders start off with. We are the market. Indicators tell us where price is going. Support and resistance is what Forex is. With that logic, they in result have an outcome or fate of 95% of them failing. They are victims to the Forex education industry scam, meaning there is a lot of education systems out there or programs or mentorships but many of them do not have real quality and substance to allow a trader to become profitable, organized, and strategic. The fate as well involves several blown accounts. Tell me the last time you've heard a retail trader blow an account. Probably pretty often. Probably last NFP, right? Or the next FOMC. You'll always hear about some trader blowing their account. Retail traders also have the fate of psychologically fighting fear and greed. Many people within this large group are money hungry and driven to make profits and to show off to their friends that they are profitable without actually showing them techniques and methods on how to enter and exit a trade. These traders are also less organized. Compared to the commercials, retail traders have no organization when to trade and how to trade. When I think or define commercial speculators, these are the few things that come to mind. As you can see in the bubble, I have written down informed liquidity provider moves price. Now, when we take a further look into the logic of the commercial speculators, you can see that they created the marketplace. They actually created the playing ground that we small liquidity traders are playing in. They made the rules. They made the code. Why would we think that the code that they made is going to benefit us, the retail trader or the small liquidity traders in the market? The more you accept that the market is being controlled by the commercial speculators, the more successful you are going to be as a trader. They are not in the business of losing money. They are always in the business of making money. Banks do not open up shop to close down shop. Banks do not open to go to foreclose or to go bankrupt or to basically get out of business. No, when banks open, 
they intend to be open for very long periods of time. The banks also need to execute large trades by specific times and specific days. So as we go along this mentorship on YouTube, you're going to be taught that there are certain days and there are certain times within those days of the week that the market is being injected with volume and the commercials are going to be pushing price in a certain direction, either up or down. Now, because of this logic, they have a fate of not losing money. Since they made the rules, they know how to actually operate and move along the foreign exchange market. They never lose. Tell me the last time you heard about a central bank blowing an account or losing its funding. But you can hear several opportunities or several examples of a retail trader blowing their account and being really dissatisfied with their trading results. They fuel the marketplace. They actually have the liquidity and the pockets to fuel and move the market. When they buy, it actually does something to the market. When retail traders or small speculators buy, it does nothing to the market. We are too small. We are not even seen to the large speculators and the commercial speculators. The small speculators are so tiny, it's like they don't even exist. They automated their trading. Now, when we think about the commercials or the central banks, people think of a person actually inside a bank sitting down behind a computer screen and actually doing a technical analysis, a fundamental analysis. No, that is not what's happening. It is automated. They created a computer algorithm that takes these trades for them. And then another fate of theirs is they hedge the market. Like I said before, since they fuel the market and they have the liquidity and the pockets to do whatever they please with the market, they can be buying and selling at the same time at huge amounts without having to worry about an account being blown because their pockets are that deep. Now that brings me to the next topic. Are you a lion or a sheep? To summarize, as a retail trader, you should be looking to trade with the thought process of the central banks. The central banks have a different approach to Forex because they are the ones moving price. Retail traders do the opposite and find it hard to be profitable. We are all spectators, but we must be an informed spectator. That concludes today's teaching, and I'm going to leave you guys off with a quote. If you don't read the newspaper, you are uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. Denzel Washington. Thank you, and peace.